Welcome to Services Marketing and now we will talk about Module 29. As you know that we are discussing about managing people for service advantage and Module 27, 28 and 29 uh, are talking about managing people for service advantage. So now let us see what we will talk about uh, in this module. So we have already talked about the key elements of service uh, talent cycle, attraction, selection, hiring uh, for uh, service jobs and importance of internal marketing communication and these were covered in module 27 and 28. Now we will talk about service oriented culture and the leadership style. So we will try to know how to motivate and energize service employees so that they will deliver service excellence and productivity. Then we will understand what is a service oriented culture. Know the difference between service climate and culture and describe the determinants of a climate for service. Then we will understand the qualities of uh, effective leaders in a service organization and then the various leadership styles, importance of role modeling and focusing entire organization on the front line. Because you know that these frontline employees are very important for uh, service quality and productivity at the same time. Now how to go about motivating and energizing people and we are basically talking about uh, the employees and more importantly the frontline employees. So staff performance is a function of ability and motivation. So there are two things, first is the ability of that person and how motivated, how, how much motivated he is. Effective hiring, training, empowerment and teams give a firm able people and performance appraisal and reward systems are key to motivating them. So these are the, these are the things that is hiring, effective hiring, training, em empowering those people and teams give the firm the able people, able people to perform the task that they are given and the performance appraisal and reward system are the key to motivating them. So these are the two things that we have talked about in the first point and this is how these two things are, are, are put into practice. Motivating and rewarding strong service performers are some of the most effective ways to retaining them. So you see that how important these motivate, uh, this motivation and reward systems are in motivating and retaining good people. Many firms think in terms of money as reward, but it does not pass the test of an effective motivator. So money is not the only thing that, uh, that uh, these people want. Apart from money, more lasting rewards are the job content itself, recognition and fee feedback and the goal accomplishment. So just by giving them enough money will not work as a motivator. Another important thing in the life of a, uh, of a service employee are the job content, the recognition for having done a good job and the feedback on that and also the goal accomplishment. Now let us look at what is the job content. So that is the first thing, the important thing. So people are motivated and satisfied simply by knowing they are doing a good job. So that is the, oh, the first and the most important thing. This is true especially if the job has a variety of different activities that are to be carried out, requires the completion of whole and identifiable piece of work and is seen as significant in the sense that it has an impact on the lives of others. And it comes with autonomy and flexibility. It provides direct and clear feedback about how well employees did their work. So that is for example great, great, uh, grateful customers and sales performance. So the uh, sales performance is great and the customers are also grateful. So that uh, is the uh, most important motivator for uh, service employees. Then what is meant by this feedback and recognition? Humans are social beings and they derive a sense of identity and belongingness to an organization from the recognition and feedback. So when organization recognize and, and gives feedback so that uh, the employees they derive a sense of identity and belongingness to that organization. If employees are recognized and thanked for service excellence beyond what happens during formal performance appraisal meeting, they will want to continue achieving it. 
So, that is very important that it is not only about the formal performance appraisal meetings, but the employee should be continuously recognized and thanked for service excellence. Putting employees in touch with end users and letting them hear positive feedback from customers can be very motivating. So, when the customers they give the positive feedback ab about the employees, so that is the, is the greatest motivator for the employees. So, next is what is this goal achievement? Goals that are specific, difficult but attainable and accepted by staff are the strong motivator. So, these are the characteristics of these goals. First is they should be specific. The second is they should be difficult, but not so difficult that they become unattainable and also accepted by the staff. So, these are the three things that uh, are very important so far as goal achievement is concerned. Specific goals result in high performance as compared to no goals or vague goals, do your best or goals that are impossible to achieve. So, important here is that there should be specific goals, not the goal should not be too broad or too narrow. So, they should be well defined in time and space. So, that makes the goal specific. In short, well communicated and mutually accept accepted goals are effective motivator, well communicated and mutually accepted goals. So, these are to be communicated and they, they are to be mutually accepted and the goals should be specific, difficult but uh, attainable and accepted by the staff. So, these uh, makes the uh, makes goal, goal important or goal achievement as important motivator for the service personnel. Now, let us look at the service culture, climate and leadership. So, so far we have discussed the nuts and bolts of HR in service firms. Now, take a look at the leader's role in nurturing an effective service culture within the organization. It is the responsibility of the leaders to create a service culture with values that inspire, energize and guide service providers. So, these leaders, the people at the top, they will, they are responsible for having those kind of values that will inspire, energize and guide the service employees. So, we are talking of the service employees. And these are the values that these are the values that they should be able to inculcate in their service employees. So, the, the value should be that they should inspire, energize and guide. So, this is what the leaders are supposed to do. Now, how to go about building a service oriented culture? Service firms that strive to deliver service excellence need a strong service culture. So, uh, with culture then will come actions. So, it is important that first a culture is to be uh, made, the service organization should have a strong service culture, only then the, uh, the service delivery can be excellent. A service culture that is continuously reinforced and developed by management to achieve alignment with the firm's strategy. A service culture that is continuously reinforced. So, this culture has to be continuously reinforced and developed by management to achieve alignment with the firm's strategy. So, this culture should be, culture and strategy should be in line. Organizational culture con uh, concerns the basic assumptions and values that gu guide organization action. And this organization culture includes first shared perceptions or themes regarding what is important in the organization that is the first thing. Second is shared values about what is right and what is wrong. The third is shared understanding about what works and what does not. The fourth is the shared beliefs and assumptions about why these beliefs are important. And the fifth, the last one is shared styles of working and relating to others. So, these are the various components of organizational culture. So, you now you see that everything here is shared shared across the organization. Transforming an organization to develop new culture along each of these five dimensions is no easy task for even the most gifted leader. So, this culture is one of the most difficult thing to change. 
एंड मोर स्पेसिफिकली ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कल्चर इज द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट थिंग टू चेंज and it is very difficult even for the best of the leaders to do that to uh, to uh, to bring about all the cha uh, changes in this organization culture leonard berry advocates a value driven leadership that inspires and guides service provider so we are talking he talks about the value driven leadership that inspires one and guides so once it inspires then it becomes easy to guide leadership should bring out the passion for serving tap the creativity of service provider nourish their energy and commitment and give them a fulfilled working life and that will lead to high service quality and productivity because the employees now think that they have a much more fulfilled working life an essential feature of a strong service culture is a strong belief in the importance of delivering superior customer value and service excellence so now this again comes come, comes back so that uh, every pe every person in the organization should uh, should have a strong belief that it, it is important to deliver superior customer value and service excellence some of the core values very found in, in excellent service firms so that included excellence innovation joy team work respect integrity and social profit Berry further boiled down the definition of service culture to two points: shared perception of what is and what is important in an organization. So that is the first point: shared perception of what is important in an organization, and the second is shared values and beliefs of why those things are important. So first is what what is important, and then why these things are important. So these are the two things that uh, he has pointed out. a climate for service while culture is more overarching and value focused organization climate is part of the organization culture that can be felt and seen so now we are moving from from the uh, culture to the climate and obviously climate uh, will be dependent upon the culture employees re uh, rely heavily on their perceptions of what is important by noting what the company and their leaders do not so much what they say so now what they do is reflected in the climate so that is the part of the climate and this is this is more inspiring that what the leaders themselves do rather than what they are saying climate represent the shared perception of employees about the practice procedure and type of behavior that gets supported and rewarded in a particular setting so we are talking about the practices procedures and the types of behavior as a climate must relate to something specific for instance to service support innovation or safety multiple climates often coexist within a single organization essential features of a climate for service includes first is the clear marketing goals and the second is a strong drive and support to be the best in delivering superior customer value or or service quality so these are the two essential features of any climate of a service first is that uh, the marketing goal should be clear and second is the, uh, the employee should have a strong drive and also support from the organization to be, to give their best in delivering superior customer value and service quality what are the qualities of effective leaders in service organization so leaders are responsible for creating a culture and climate for the uh, for the uh, this uh, service organization and the following are some qualities that effective leaders in a service organization should have so now you see that the role of leader is so important in a service organization because they create this culture they change the culture and they also bring about a change in the climate of this organization so the following are some qualities that effective leaders in a service organization should have the first is the love for the business excitement about the business will encourage individuals to teach the business to others and to pass on to them the art and secret of operating it so the first important thing that these people do 
the, the top managers do, the leaders do is they should have the love for their business. That is that they should be excited about the business and will encourage others to pass on to them the art and the secrets of operating this business. The second thing that they have is that they are driven by a set of core values. Many outstanding leaders are driven by a set of core values that are related to service excellence and performance they pass on in the organization. So, the first thing is that they should love the business, the second is they should have a set of core values and then belief in the people. Recognizing the key part played by employees in delivering service, service leaders need to believe in the people who work for them and pay special attention to communicating with employees. So, beliefs in the people that people will deliver as have, has been designed. So, this is another important uh, quality of an effective leader. The fourth is ability to ask great questions. Effective leaders are able to ask great questions and get answers from the team rather than just re relying on themselves to dominate the decision making process. So, that is how the teams are built. So, they will ask great question and they will get answers from the team rather than making uh, asking the questions, questions and giving the answers themselves always. The fifth important quality of a, a effective leader is effective communication. Effective leaders have a talent for communicating with others in a way that is easy to understand. They know their audience and are able to communicate even complicated ideas in simple terms accessible to all. Then they are the role models. Effective role models exhibit the behavior which serves as a role model for their teams. So, this is that they walk the talk. So, they perform the work so that people are able to see and that is what makes them a role model. Let us look at the leadership styles, focus on the basics and role modeling. Leaders who demonstrate a commitment to service quality, set high standards, recognize and remove obstacles and ensure the ability of resources required to do it and that creates a strong climate for service. So, the for, for having a strong climate for service, it is important that there should be high standards identify and remove the obstacles and ensure that there are uh, the resources available to deliver on the goals. One of the traits of successful leader is their ability to role model the behavior that expect of managers and other employees and thereby focus the organization on the basics. So, they are able to they are able to play a, a role model of the behavior that is expected by the managers and other employees. Often this requires the approach known as management by walking around, popularized by Thomas Peters and Robert Waterman in their book In Search of Excellence. Walking around involves regular visits sometimes unannounced to various areas of the company's operation. So, just moving around the place without people getting to know that, that you will be coming. So, that is what is there in the book in search of excellence. So, walking around approach provides insights into both backstage and front stage operations. So, what is happening? The ability to observe and meet both employees and the customers and an opportunity to see how corporate strategy is implemented at the front line. So, this walking around and going to places unannounced. So, that will give you lots of insights about how the service is, is being delivered, how it, the customers are getting the service, what the frontline people are doing. For example, when Herb Keller was CEO of Southwest Airlines, no one was surprised to see him turn up at a Southwest maintenance hangar at 2 in the morning or even to encounter him working an occasional stint as a flight attendant. So, he used to go there in, in, in the in the maintenance hangar at 2 in the morning or he sometimes used to work as a flight attendant and that is how he got to know what is happening and where are the problems, where are the bottlenecks, 
whether the customer is getting the service as promised as desired now focusing the entire organization on the front line so now this is the whole uh, whole story about uh, about uh, service organization that the entire organization is focused on the front line because this is where the customers come in the customer interact with the organization so a strong service culture is one where the entire organization focuses on front line understanding that it is the lifeline of the business so this is what is very important that everyone is focused on the front line because this is what where the customers are and this is what brings in the money for the organization the organization understands that today's as well as tomorrow's revenue uh, revenues are largely driven by what happens at the service encounter so if the encounter is good so the revenues of today and tomorrow are are both assured but if it does not the happen, uh, so happens then obviously the revenues for today and tomorrow are both in danger in firms with a passion for service top management show through their action that what happens at the front line is crucially important to them by being informed and actively involved so here the top management is is actively actively involved in the front line and keep in mind that front line in service organization is very important because this is where the customers are this is where this is what makes customer satisfied this will this way, this is what makes him come back uh, again and again so that is what is very important in a service organization so they achieve this by regularly talking to and working with front line staff and the customers for example disney world's management spends weeks every year in front line staff jobs such as sweeping the streets selling ice cream or working as a ride attendant in order to gain a better appreciation and understanding of what really happens on the ground so this is the, uh, this is how they they keep on understanding where are the bottlenecks what the customer wants whether uh, whether the customers uh, wants are being uh, being fulfilled or not and this is how they deliver on excellent service and the problem here is that this has to be done continuously instead of doing it once in a while because customers requirements and their needs and wants they will keep on changing therefore they uh, what they expect from the front line employees that will also keep on changing so that is why they they spend weeks every year so that happens every year instead of one in five once in five or 10 years service leaders believe the way the firm handles little things sets the tone for how it handles everything else so even a small step taken by the service leader it goes a long way in setting the standards because then the front line and other people th- people will uh, will be Uh, will be serious about their jobs for example zappos focuses all new recruits on the front line by ensuring that everyone who is hired in its headquarters goes through the same training their call center employees also go so that is called as customer loyalty teams go through now this is the inverted organizational pyramid now as all of you all of us have seen and know that this is the traditional organizational pyramid so at the top is obviously the top management then the middle management and the front line staff now you see that this front line staff is at this bottom of this pyramid now what happens is now we are looking at an inverted pyramid with the customer and front line focus so now this pyramid is uh, is turned upside down so at the top is the customer and at and after that comes the front line employee and the front line employ, employees and customers so that uh, that is this moment of truth and then there are the top management and the middle management and the support function so now in this case what was at the top was important and in this case these are important so th- uh, this is why this organizational pyramid is inverted just to 
show that and just uh, just because everyone should keep in mind that who is important whether it is the top management or the frontline staff and the customers so this figure this figure uh, figure 1 shows the inverted pyramid which highlights the importance of the frontline now to conclude in this module we have learned how to motivate and energize service employees so that they will deliver on excellent service and also increasing productivity at the same time we have also understood what is a service oriented culture how this culture moves on to become climate what do what is the role of the leaders here what are the qualities of great leaders we are more more in, interested in uh, in service organizations for service organizations and we have learned the difference between service climate and culture and described the determ determinants of the climate for uh, for uh, for services we have also highlighted qualities of le effective leaders in service organization and then we have understood the various types of leadership styles importance of role modeling in services and focusing of the entire organization on the front line these are the three books from which the material for this module was used thank you